Sunday, Games Club event. We just finished the Nook Man, and now we're here. I just was like, I have to go to a wedding. Hey guys, how's it going? We should be live here. Let me turn back on that and turn off that. Perfect. All right. Welcome to the first inaugural edition of the Games Club. Our first game that we decided to play was Psychonauts. I am joined today by Fiasco. Hi. We got Goose. Honk. <laughs> Graves. Yep. And Carson. How's it going, everybody? Hey guys, so what we did here is we, we kind of arbitrarily picked the first one, um, but we selected a game, we gave ourselves about a month to play through it, some of us beat it, some of us did not. However, we've all formulated an opinion, and we're going to talk about it today. Um, if, uh, if you're interested in being a part of the next month's game club, you can see down there in the bottom left corner of the stream, you can vote for next month's game by entering one, two, or three in the chat. 8-Bit Hordes, Eco, and Terraria are all on the table, we'll talk a little bit more about them at the end. But for now, let's get started talking about Psychonauts. So Psychonauts, I had a lot of fun with this game, guys. Uh, I was really happy that Graves actually suggested it, because it's, it's kind of an old one. Uh, released April 19th of 2005 by Double Fine Productions. They're the creators of other games, like uh, I think they made Grim Fandango. Um, they've got a couple of other really cool, kind of unique games out there. And this game definitely fit that vibe. It was very unique, is the word I would go with it. Um, it's, uh, it's technically a single-player platformer, um, so think kind of old-school games like Crash Bandicoot. Um, and there's, there's a lot of strength in the platforming of this game, but there's also a lot of fun puzzle-solving and combat to it, too. So can't, can't go past those. Um, before, we, before we really start jumping into the specifics, what, what did you guys just kind of think overall of the game? Is, was, it a, was it an enjoyable experience for you, Fiasco? Uh, yes, it was an enjoyable experience. Um... I had I was very impressed with what this game had to offer for how old it was, um, and it's sad to say like 2005 is old, but um, 
I was impressed by the the interactions that I had in the game. Uh, there were a couple of small concerns that I had that ultimately led to me not finishing the game. Just to, it, it kind of turned me off. It wasn't dragging me back in. But uh, we'll discuss all that stuff as throughout the the, the review. But but overall, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. How about you, Graves? What did you think of the game? I know you were the one that recommended it, so obviously you had uh, some yeah. prior heartstring tarts ties to it. I played this game years ago, so um, I originally played it on the 360, even though it came out on the original Xbox. Um, I was a huge fan of this game. It's very unique. Um, it has. It's one of probably the first games I found that were I, that was actually very funny to me. It, you know, resonated me with like sense of humor and stuff. Um, it's my all-time favorite platformer. I think um, you're right about the uniqueness. I mean, look at this loading screen, right? So we've got, yeah. you've got this giant brain that's like your loading screen. You jump around and, and load your game from that. Um, it, yeah, and, and the funniness, too. I, I totally agree. The writers for this game, <laughs> they, they did a good job. Yeah, it's, it's just, I don't know, um, other platformers, it's like, nah, I don't think anything else is quite like this. Um, and at the time, it was a very good. I mean, it was a very good game. I think it. It's definitely dated. Um, there's there's some stuff I would like to talk about as well. It's kind of shows like how dated it is with like polish of the game and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's it's just I I enjoy the game. Um, for those who we didn't finish it, I just pointed out that the game technically like speedrun wise can be done in like 35 minutes. Wow. Yeah, actually, having yeah. having gone through and like gone to edit the videos, I'm like, man, this is a lot of content of me just failing puzzle jumps over and over and over. <laughs> like three hours of content got cut down into about ten minutes just because yeah. I just cut out all the the failure. Um, I think that the the characters in this game really shown through. You said, yeah, it's an old game. The graphics definitely, you know, are are older, but they've got kind of a unique style to them that helps them age a little bit better, I think. But We've got the we've got the cutscene up here. This is from the very beginning of the game. Uh, Goose, what, what were your re reactions initially to opening this game up for the first time and seeing all these strange potato shaped people? That was actually my first thought. Was this is a different art style that was going to take a minute to get used to? I'd actually never played. I'd heard about Psychonauts for years and years and years. Never played it, and it was just like, ah, oh, it's an old game. I'll get around to it uh, someday when I have unlimited free time, which will pretty much be never. But at first, it's like this is some very like Tim Burton style like animation kind of thing going on, and they got the guy with the giant afro who's easily three times the size of any other person just by his hair. <laughs> I call them cheese right. ball in my run through. I, I forget what his actual name was. Bobby Zilch, I think. That Carrot right. top. Yeah, Bobby Zilch. Carrot top Bobby. cheese ball. Yeah. But yeah, there were there were some just crazy, you know, and, and none of them are are very reminiscent of each other, right? Everybody looks. Yeah kind of unique or has a specific thing and a bunch of these side characters i actually kind of regret playing through the game so quickly because mm -hmm. i never got the chance to to learn a lot about some of these extra characters or get many of their sidelines which i'm so, i'm aware is a big miss that and that was one of the things that i really enjoyed and part of my overall review was like how each character you know appearance aside each character was an individual and what took me so long was i wanted to go experience what each and every one of them had to say and listen and sometimes i would find myself like standing next to a couple that were just interacting with each other and listening to their conversations mm -hmm. and it was and I, I really appreciated about this game as i as i ran around i'm like hmm, i wonder what this one has to say with aluminum foil on his head or, <laughs> or what, what this, this girl that keeps running around peeking on me and stuff what's what's this all about and i, I spent a lot of time interacting with that and it was great though as i appreciated it something i don't think you really heard about in 2005 you know, I don't think other games had that kind of level of interaction or just life to their characters in an open not, world like that. Yeah, not a platformer. Not something yeah. that wasn't like a, already an RPG. Yeah, it's, I think, having a, uh, a thought out, like, structure of characters and storyline and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, and I think it, if you actually get involved with that kind of stuff, because that's, that's what I've done every time I played this game, is I always go around after each mission, go around to the different areas, because they move around, and then they have different interactions with different characters, and there's different little, like, their own little dialogue and, and stuff. And so each time, it's like there's a different thing going on. Um, 
uh, like there's one um, I can't remember the short your 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 short Duggan. like buddy with yeah with the uh, tinfoil helmet. He's arguing with squirrels at one point. Um, <laughs> I actually I wrote that quote down because I remember seeing it and laughing so dude. much the first time. Yeah. And he's talking to the squirrels and he's like, "No, I could never do that. I could never." kill everyone <laughs> that was my first i started cracking up and laughing and my roommates looking at me and they're like is everything okay i'm just like yeah it's just this uh you know 14 year old video game i'm laughing at here now question after you left did you turn around and come back yes yeah because he blows up all the squirrels or they disappear no no the tails or something fall down like they, they drop in chunks he he yeah he explodes the squirrels with his mind <laughs> Really? Uh, yeah, when your back is hurt and you don't see it, and all when you turn back, all you see is, is like parts of squirrels like falling all over the place. <laughs> so, because he wears the tin helmet, because he's apparently exploded some mines already, and it's supposed to keep him from doing that. But yeah, I know. Yes. I was surprised that such a a childlike cartoon, you know, looking game had such. Uh, visceral content in it sometimes the the jokes got pretty dirty and there was some gruesome stuff um but it was all in good fun and i thought the the comedy that they delivered was pretty pretty dang solid so i think that everybody managed to finish the first level right carson yes. you you, yes. you made it all the way through the game correct yeah i made it through everything nice so so, <laughs> so the first level was oleander's basic braining where you kind of find yourself in oleander's head uh you're you're in like this introductory to platforming obstacle course um and what what would you say was the most memorable part of this for you carson because i know what i'm gonna i'm gonna say the most memorable part of this um you kind of got to get a little bit of uh an idea of how everybody's personality was because you see all the other students there i guess and you kind of get to see how they all react like bobby zilch is like being a dick essentially and like kicks you down a, a well almost like kicks you off a platform and then like you get to see how everybody else reacts to some of it and just like how it just kind of throws you into the action it's obviously styled after like a world war ii type of thing like running through trenches and going up barbed wire and whatnot and just trying to get your whole bearings while there's just audio all over the place and just fires and things exploding and whatnot so it's kind of a just kind of throws you right into it was was my first thought was kind of interesting that it just kind of threw you to the wolves up almost i was actually kind of surprised that you know that they're throwing all these different platforming things at you there's a little bit of like all right you know climb that pole and, and oleander's telling you to do stuff but it kind of just throws you in like you know i mm -hmm. I, I think it might have told you how to double jump but that was about it and you kind of just had to figure out the rest for yourself which was fun um this is where i noticed that despite being an older game the platforming is super tight like the controls feel good and i didn't i didn't feel very often like the camera or the controls were really fighting me when i was playing the game which i was i was glad for did in, everyone in, play in, with in controllers or did anyone play keyboard mouse you know that's a, a great question i i'd only use the controller mm -hmm. yeah me too i mean the that's game good. was originally made for a controller so yeah I wanted to see how the PC port kind of worked with, you know, a controller or a keyboard and mouse just to mess with it. And uh, by far, the, the controller is way better. Like the, the the WASD and mouse camera, it, no, it just it didn't work out so well for me. Yeah. So I definitely agree. And I thought that the first part, you know, kind of the jumping platforming was fun. And then you got a little bit into the combat and more of like the, all right, now you have to deal with damage. So the second part was like these frozen trenches um, that you're in. You get to you get to learn about how the the memory banks work. So you find like these vaults that have people's memories in them. Um, I think Oleander's was actually like a really good one. So it was supposed to be like his deep, dark secrets that he locks in this vault. But it's actually just him like being a war hero. Uh, <laughs> which there, there is another memory bank that's out there uh you can't get it until later in the game because it's locked behind one of the like the cobweb things that you have to clean up um but i think if you look in that one it's actually a much darker kind of hints more towards the end of the game sort of memory bank that you kind of expect when you when you start looking for people's dirty laundry um was that the one with his uh his father in it yeah yeah so yeah. later on yeah. in the game uh, also, I didn't I didn't explicitly say this at the beginning, but if you really don't want to hear any spoilers, uh, 
maybe not the stream for you. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, I mean, we're gonna talk about the story in depth. So, um, yeah, I would probably put spoilers in the title. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, that's that's not a bad idea. I'll probably do that here. Um, oh, gonna add parentheses spoilers. <laughs> I will. Add I mean, spoilers. really, the game came out in two thousand five. You can't really have spoilers at this point. <laughs> it does not count. There are spoilers if you were born since two thousand five. Ah, uh, okay, that's that's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but yeah, it was really cool to to get into like the the different swinging things with the uh, the air field. I loved all of those planes that were like in pieces, and you had to jump around and climb on the tight ropes. But my favorite part of this level for sure was the very end, like that meat grinder tunnel, um, where you had to you slid down these rails, and then you come into just this sweet rotating, moving platform thing. I thought that was really cool and a, a pretty fun part of the level. That was yeah, that portion right there, like that's the showing is was my favorite portion as well. I liked yeah, but... the introduction for me because this was I've played other platforms, but this is one that I really started paying attention to uh, to what's going on outside just the jumping from platform to platform and getting an introduction to all the collectibles and everything that this game had to offer. It was I was really impressed at how they tied this in with the characters. Oh, that's something we didn't talk about, the collectibles. I At first, I was like, yeah, of course I'm going to try and like 100% this game. And then <laughs> about 10 minutes later, I'm like, no, there's just too much. Like, There's no way that I'll be able to get all of the projections, all of the cobwebs. Like, everything that you have to pick up is, is just crazy. So you get, we get our first merit badge at the end of, of the basic <clears throat> braining. Um, it, it gives us the, uh, the ability to go to other parts of the camp and start doing some more stuff, um, which takes us to the next... Uh, the next level, the the shooting gallery, Sasha's shooting gallery. Um, so this one was interesting. I kind of thought that the, first of all, I thought that the shooting system was really clunky until I realized that I could lock on. So, so I was a little <laughs> disappointed. I didn't figure that out earlier. Um, yeah. But I liked uh, I liked this level just for like it's it's what it was saying about the character, right? Because Coach Oleander's mind was like this battlefield, and it was all over the place. But then when you get into uh, when you get into this one, and and actually I think Sasha talks about how like a correct mind should be, you know, built into these boxes and um, everything should kind of be be managed and maintained. Um, so this one actually shows here. I've got the got the clip coming up, um, like the the character of Sasha is all put together in this nice box and he's got kind of everything locked down under control until Raz comes in here and starts, uh, starts causing all sorts of trouble. Um, so I thought it was interesting to see the difference in characters represented in the world because I was expecting, uh, I guess I wasn't expecting that when I first, when I first came in. Yeah. And it definitely kind of lends itself to the rest of the game. You know, all of these worlds that you see are very different from each other. Um, which I think really helped add to the the kind of pace and, and playthrough of the game. Even though it's like a super short game and the platforming is basic platforming, you don't really get any super new platforming abilities. It keeps the game fresh just because the worlds themselves are so different. That's, yeah, one of my favorite things about the game is just each level is unique. Each level uses different abilities, has you do something different. Um, it's not all like gathered quests or all combat. Um, I, I'm a big fan of puzzle games and games that don't really tell you how to do everything. So it's it was a it's always a very fun experience to play this one. Yep. What did you think of the combat in the game, uh, Aaron Fiasco? What did what did, what were your thoughts on that? So I. Uh... It took me a little bit to figure out the lock-on piece, too. I don't know if I missed a dialogue or something yeah. there. And, yeah. uh, I was like, oh, I can do this, and it locks in. And uh, I I liked the melee and the shooting portion of that. Um, I think I got levitate. What other what ability comes after levitate? Um, the the pyromancy? The pyromancy. I didn't mess with the pyromancy much. But the um, but when it, when it comes to combat, it was pretty good. There was a... This this mission right here, this this level here was like the first real boss fight, I believe, right? The uh, the big butcher, big belly. Butcher. Yeah. Uh, yep. The uh, what are they called? On, sensors. Sensors. Yeah. The guys with yeah. the rubber stamps. So they had they had the sensors with the rubber stamps, and that was I like that. That was fluid. Um, but 
at the end of this one when I had to when you're on so, the big cube. Oh, the, this is a different. Actually, yeah, the one that's showing. Yeah, this, this yeah, is this, just, it's just like a few minutes for this. Down. Is the this is your own mind where you go in. Okay, and this is one. Yeah, with the big dark thing and then, you shoot it. Yeah. Yeah, you you come back and then you that. leave. Yeah. So this is the one why you learn all these other abilities is because you have to get through these different parts of the level. Right. Okay. So on the next one, we'll get to that in a second, I guess. But yeah, the big, overall, the, big the, 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 the combat along with the platforming was good and fluid. I liked it. I appreciated it. Um, I, I found myself doing melee more often than shooting, unless, of course, it was, you know, across a, a ledge or an obstacle. But yeah, that's kind of how I was at, too. Yeah, I, I, would, I would just sit there and spam my, my was it X button and uh, just karate chop the shit out of everything because it, it seemed more effective to me. Yeah, you, you don't really have to worry about your health, especially later in the game when you have like two full bars. So I just sit there and with melee. Yeah, it's really like the combat kind of allows you to do however you feel. Like, I mean, you can skip mobs if you don't want to fight them. You can stealth up. To them and fight them. Um, there's different reactions with like the fire, where they'll like some things will get lit on fire and then they'll run around and catch other things on fire. Right. Um, or you could do the range stuff, but yeah, it's yeah with the like I use probably the uh, the range stuff a lot just for quickly uh, killing things. Um, I don't know. It would just I find it's easier, but there were definitely things that I just I use the melee for. If you get the upgrades for the shooting, it like bounces between multiple yep. targets. That made it a lot easier, and I yep. wound up using that more often than the melee. But the melee was just so much easier because they never really did that much damage to you. I never really felt too much danger during combat. It was the main thing that I yeah had an there issue were, with the combat. There really wasn't. The only time there was any kind of danger is if you're trying to figure out like a a s certain sequence that you had to do or a specific like some kind of puzzle to beat the person. Yeah, like like the later on tank boss, the first yeah. tank. Oh yeah, that one took me like a while to figure out, and I didn't die. I was running around like, how do I kill you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The combat in this game did feel kind of just separate from the whole experience. Like I, I definitely avoided a lot of fights and kind of just mashed my way through them, just because you know, like it kind of lets you. And for me, the the more exciting part of the game was was doing the platforming and kind of solving the puzzles. The combat wasn't especially gripping. Yeah, I mean, the majority of this game is puzzles. They just add some kind of uh, enemy there to give you something else. Slow um, you down and distract you for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. So here's but the part where we're going into Sasha's mind, and you can see everything is like this abstract art, perfect cube. This was, okay, this was the point where I just almost lost it, and this is where I first was like, yeah, the writers for this game, they've got it going on. Because he's like, okay, we we're going to teach you how to concentrate your focus and release uh your thoughts as firepower so we're gonna kill something so horribly disgusting and then he brings up this lamp and is like oh tacky i can't even look at it get that out of my sight blast it <laughs> yeah. and i just i like i don't know why but it just caught me off guard not expecting this this tacky lamp to uh to be my first target that i had to, <laughs> to break down that yeah that so if, the if you randomness of that moment there was, it, <laughs> I, I didn't like the lamp. Yeah, I laughed at it and stuff like that. But that kind of like defines everything that I was like, just kind of as even in the open world, as I was stopping and looking around at, at how it's all built and framed and stuff. I was like, this is uh, definitely a unique game, and this also made me curious about what else comes from the masterminds that made this. Uh, they this have a lot of unique games, like. The only game that I would say is maybe mainstream that people are familiar with is Brutal Legends. Brutal Legend, yeah. Brutal Legend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that the one. one. Jack remember Black. That. Yeah, the one with Jack Black. Oh, they, yeah, they, yes. They, That's the they, same people. Okay. They made that one, but they have, like, a couple of others. Um, like, Grim Fandango is one that Nate uh, kind of referenced, but there's a game called Full Throttle that they did a remastered version. I never, I've never played it, but I've... I know of it. I've seen it. Full throttle. That was back with the uh, like. Yeah. Like it's it's a really old game. three point whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a really old game, but they made a remastered version of wow. it. But like none of their games, other than maybe <clears throat> Brutal Legend, is like this standout like big title game. 
Um, well, maybe with the exception of Psychonauts. I feel like Psychonauts was one of their bigger ones, too. But Brutal Legends was, I feel, a little bit different than what they're, mm. at least gameplay-wise. So they don't really do anything that's, like, big graphically like that. Everything they do is more cart, kind of old style. Actually, cartoony. this that right there where you sit down in the cart... Mm -hmm. The uh, nothing. I'm just. I just come down here to hear your voice. I was like, no, oh, yeah. yeah, talking, yeah. <laughs> talking to the cart. I thought that was funny too. I, I think I would just like I would select that one multiple times just to do it. It's like I'm just mm -hmm. here to hear your voice because it sounds like something I would say in real life. Like, yeah, hey. I had to travel to every location just to see what she would say different. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like when you go to the beach and she calls you Admiral and like uh, Psycho Master and things like that when you go <laughs> go to different places. It's just like. It's 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 hilarious that he put on like a little sexy voice for it on like the thing he made. <laughs> oh yeah, and here's where I'm... we get to learn about Rasputin's water phobia, which, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was a little confused as to why they they kind of talked about this. I don't know if maybe it was just an excuse to like have have a you know a reference for why he can't actually swim and it kind of like a joke at platformers like if you touch the water you'll immediately die. So I, I thought maybe it was a little bit of that because it, it doesn't come up a whole lot later in the game. Um, you know, there's the whole talk about how, like, the gypsies have cursed his entire family to die via water. Uh, mm -hmm. But I thought that was just kind of an interesting thing. Oh, and our friend Dogen, completely brainless. Yeah. TV. TV. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, with the water, I mean, it's maybe, like, the background story really didn't make, like, a whole, like, there was nothing to it, but in... It added to the gameplay in each different level. Even like when you're in a brain in a artificial water, like I don't know if you noticed on the uh, on the theater uh, where the boat comes up. If you jump into that water, you get pulled in as well, which it's just a theater prop, oh. not real water. No, actually, no, I did notice that. Now that I think about it, now that I remember. yeah, yeah, it did. It didn't really matter where you were at or what the water was like the the lungfish the big lungfish battle where you're running around there's hands outside the water waiting to grab you you can yep. see the hands mm -hmm. moving around as you move around mm -hmm. huh. and because the camera is like through the water angle i could never tell how close i was so i always got hit by the fish because i would circle too close because i'm like <laughs> i do not want to go near those hands <laughs> yeah but <laughs> i don't know what they do yeah i mean it's it's an interesting it's just something that i think they added for you know another thing to have to avoid or you know. I mean it's it, it's nice that they give you a little bit of backstory about it just for the platforming aspect because it's like in Halo if you fell in the water you're like a super soldier with a super suit and you die anyway you just like, die <laughs> that doesn't make any sense but this it, it gives a little bit of context and idea of why you can't touch that water yeah yep. yep this level of play right now was probably I liked the whole the vibe of it just the atmosphere really yeah so Not this was good, this was mila's dance party that's what i told you man if i cut all this stuff down um it ends up being like 10 minutes you know i don't feel so bad now that i miss those same hoops oh god i was stuck on those loops but yeah you really had to get on the ledge before you did your like you had to get as far as possible before you do your jump and float down and it took me about 10 or 12 minutes. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, how is this hard for me? <laughs> uh, this actually, this scene right here with the uh, the shooty button thing. Oh, the yeah. Camera, I couldn't figure it out. This probably took me 10 tries. This was the one I mean, time that I felt the camera was kind of fighting me. But when I finally got it, it felt it felt good. Like, I liked this kind of super monkey ball style, mm -hmm. you know, floating well, around and jumping. I thought actually Levitate ended up being one of my favorite spells just because when you did just want to go quick, you could you could skip a lot of, like, Platform, yeah, platforming by just kind of cheating this, with levitate. It made this, it so trivial. This is kind of what I was talking about before, where I felt like certain things would break the game, uh, and levitate feels like one of those ones where you could, yeah, definitely skip a lot of stuff um, because you can jump so much higher. Yeah, I have uh, to. Well, I have to bet that all the speedrunners that play this game and they they probably have all like these secret little levitate jump spots that they There have. is actually a levitate to flotation like spam that actually makes you float up. Really? Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, there's a way of doing that. I I've, I've never done it, but there's also a way of skipping places where you do the ground pound where you jump in the air, you come down and pound the pound the ground and then you somehow fly up into the air. So like the portion where you get here, you have to get the uh, the canoe mm -hmm. badge or whatever. Uh, 
you can actually skip that whole portion of getting that badge by jumping and like doing this weird ground pound where you hit the ground, you bounce up in the air, and then you can basically kind of make it all the way over to the dock that she's on. Interesting. Uh, I tried to do that. I got very close. Yeah, I there's. Didn't know I needed the oarsman badge. I yeah, I did. I've never actually done it. It's just stuff I saw on the speed run after I played the game. I started watching speed runs, and this was one that I was interested in watching. But you are. It's kind of interesting they did that because, as mu- I spent so much time in just the campgrounds, and so, and I suffer from completionism. And um, yep, yep. And so <laughs> I, I quickly learned that I was like, man, I'm not gonna make it anywhere. If I keep doing All right, hold, this. real quick on that scene. See how the badge flies in? The mm-hmm. one thing that bugged me is like you don't get to see all the other badges you already got. It's like that, wait, I, yes. I already got like four of these badges. Where are they? I'm a Boy Scout. Like I want to see my badges. I yeah. agree wholeheartedly. No. That actually really bothered me more than it should have. Like I don't understand why, but that really got. Because every time you got a new badge, it just reminds you, and they're just like, hey, don't forget, uh, we're not going to show you your other badges anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not unless you open unless them. you press save or like start or select and like check this, right. you're not going to see anything. <laughs> All right, so let me see what I can do here because I do believe, yes, I have the milkman. One of my videos got like stuck in my encoder, um, so I, I've got some footage, but we'll try and put it up while we talk about it because we we have to we have to at least see and show Lungfishopolis because I. You were right, Rob. This this actually probably was one of my favorite, uh, mm-hmm. one of my favorite zones. Um, yeah, it's not it's not my favorite because I thought that I had the best puzzles. It's my favorite because it's so fun. Like just the characters in there, the city, the background, like commentary and noise. Like the puzzles weren't difficult. They were very easy to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't confusing to me at all. Like I was able to just figure it out pretty easily. Um, you're limited on what abilities you can use in there because you can't use levitate. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like the whole atmosphere is just kind of really fun and quirky. You're, so you're it's just it's, Godzilla. You yeah, don't need to levitate yeah, if you're Godzilla. You are Godzilla. You're Reptar just walking <laughs> yeah. around the city blowing shit up. The quotes from that also, I wrote one of those down because it was also hilarious. And they're like, oh my God, Gogolor is headed for the orphanage. And they're like, Not the oh, orphanage! Right. He's headed away from the orphanage. And then you smash the orphanage, and he's like, oh my god, the puppy orphanage. And I was like, oh my god, I crushed a puppy orphanage. <laughs> I <laughs> felt terrible. My, my commentary during that, yeah, it was it was bad. This was I love I love this little scene here. We're cutting off a bit of the uh, the chat, but um, like talking to, uh, to why well, can't I think of her name? Uh, Lily, Lily. Yeah, Lily. Uh, we're Lily. talking to Lily in this exchange when they go back and forth because they're talking about um, like, oh god, something is horrible is happening, and they're getting all worked up, and then she's just like, let's make out! And I was like, oh, this is okay, right? Well, Raz is, Raz is down. Was that so, was that when he first read her mind, or did she say it out loud? No, this is here, no, let me she see. Said, she said that out loud. She said that out loud. There's a different portion. Oh, god, she, like, let's make out right there. Well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right here. That was one of my one of my top favorite things so about excited. this game was, was their, them two interacting with each other. Her character, like I even have in my written down notes here, just favorite character interactions: Lily, Nils, and Token. <laughs> so yep. something else that it, you, know, you guys might not have done is like there's different things that you get in your inventory, um, and you can go to different people holding it and talk to them, and they give you a different reaction. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't know if you guys ever pulled out the bracelet that she gives you, but he's like, I don't really want to talk to anybody about this yet until we talk to Lily. But there's like um, there's a feather you get at some point. You can go around with that feather and tickle people with the feather. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, there's a crow feather you get early on. There's also, um, what is it? It's the button that you get before to go find Sasha's cabin. You can go to each person and ask them about the button as well, and they give you a different interaction. And th- there's one with Lily with the button where you go and you go. Uh, Lily, uh, you know where I can find Sasha's uh, base? And she's like, stupid, it's on the map. <laughs> and you can go and look, and like, there's an X showing where it is on the map. But Real talk, when I first saw this, I just assumed they just murdered a character off, and I was like, all right, <laughs> yeah. you're me for a loop every single time. It's like, no, she didn't get kidnapped. She literally just got eight, and you're just like, well, your new girlfriend's instantly dead. Congratulations, <laughs> you've been Disneyed. Like, she's, she's already gone. Yeah, that was fun. And then this uh, this boss fight, I don't. I, oh god, I don't want to put my footage for this boss fight. 
This oh took God. me a long time to figure out what to do. Like, I saw the nails, and I was like, this all right, I got to throw the nails at him. Like, So painful to watch. I watched this, and I was getting so frustrated. Like, the first thing I think you did was you, you hit the nail boxes when you walked in there, and you were, like, exploring. Oh, yeah. Like, they like nails. And then the rest of the match, you're just trying to throw the boxes. I'm like, no! <laughs> you don't even have to throw him. Once he's sucking in, you just hit the box. You just hit so him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can see here. I'm, I'm just like oh, throwing yeah. these nail boxes, and I'm like, okay, I can do it. Uh, and I, 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 I eventually did figure it out. I think. Let me skip a bit yeah. here. Yeah, here we go. I tried to set them on fire, and they wound up like popping sometimes, but not always. And I just couldn't figure it out. No, still haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> yeah, at some point you actually throw one, and it like breaks. Oh, yeah, there we go. Like that. Lucky. And then you thought, oh yeah. I just have to throw him into his mouth. And you're like, no, that's not how it's supposed to work. But I mean, because yeah. you, you keep on hurt. doing it and it's not working. Yeah. yeah. My goal became then like throw it and then shoot it out of the, uh, out of the <laughs> <Yeah>. air. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh God. I was, I was running around mashing X. <laughs> it was just like, oh, this boss fight's easy. Yeah. It's, it's actually like all the boss fights are easy. Like literally you do like, do Once something like two or three out, times. Yeah. Once you figure them out, it's easy. Mm -hmm. The hardest kind of... part of this one was like the the running circle bit where you had to like just kind of mm -hmm. spin yeah. around. So After once this, you yeah. yeah once you break through his mouth, you gotta like avoid go. him and stay within this orb. I thought this was kind of fun, like force platforming at a you know set slow camera speed. angle, slow speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there was only right hand. oh yeah, those, yeah. Uh, disembodied oh. hands. You can I see him. Don't want anything to do with those guys. <laughs> um, I did feel kind of like this this fight went on a little bit too long. Like, I got the gist of it, and I'm glad especially, that they had the third phase, but... Yeah, especially when you end up going into Lungfishopolis, and you're like, oh, there's more. Yeah. Um, yeah, the this, is here. Yeah, the, this, this part just... Like, it's... It almost makes you pace the game out more, because it takes so long, because it's a very slow walk. Mm -hmm. Even though you get into certain spots, you're like, oh, shit, not enough time. But, and then you have to do this thing again. Like, having to, having to do the boxes again is kind of what, like, you know. I, I was worried because I would got him down to two-thirds of his health. I was like, oh, God, don't make, me, don't make me do this a third time. Like, I get it. We got the mechanic. It was fun the first time. I figured it out. And then having to do all of this over again. Da, 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 da. All right, this, though. This is the, the final part here. Uh, and this is another one where I just got stuck and I just could not figure it out because I, I was like, yep. all right, I got to use yep. the clamshells to like smash him. Like you, that's what I eventually got, but I just couldn't you make it work. Found that, you, you actually found that part out like really quickly watching you. You just didn't know how to execute it properly. Like yep. you knew like it was a clamfish and then you're like, oh, wait, maybe it's the fishes. Like you had to do something because you tried doing the clam and you thought it didn't work and then. Yeah, so I was I was trying to like hit the clam and like mm -hmm. snap it down right as he attacked. I didn't realize I just had to stand behind the clam and he would close it. So yeah, that's yeah. what I was trying to do the whole time. I think it took me two or three lives to figure that part out. Yep. Yeah, it's it's really a, you use the the easiest way is to use the dodge, is you lock on and then you you backflip away. Oh yeah, actually the dodge is something that I kind of used at first, forgot about, and then rediscovered at the end of the game. And I was like, God, why haven't I been using the dodge the whole time? Like, this is so handy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, ideally, that's what you would use there. It's a lot easier. Because you avoid any kind of damage, and it makes sure that he does hit the clam. But... Yeah, so there we go. Eventually, boom, got him Got him trapped and finished him off. Which I was like, all right, cool, we're going to get Lily back now. Like, he's going to spit her out. Um, but then, nope. He just kind of falls to the ground, and uh, poor, poor little thing. We're gonna or have to. Uh... She's gonna spin around. She, yeah, excuse me, Linda. Sorry. Linda, Linda is a she. <laughs> but then, yeah, we get to go into what was probably my. Well, uh, I, I don't know if it was my favorite, but it was definitely up there, Lungfishopolis, where you come in here and you're just, uh, you get to meet the, you get to meet the lungfish citizens, which <laughs> I thought was great. You got the little baby lungfish there in the middle. Um, and then we're we're Gagalore, <laughs> the the giant ass um, Freedom! In invader. Freedom! Yeah. Freedom! <laughs> yeah. Freedom! So I thought this was kind of fun. Surprising when you find out you're like a revolutionary free. You're just like, wait, what? I'm a freedom fighter. This part, <laughs> this was funny at the beginning, where you're just talking normal and you're like hurting his ears and you know, <laughs> killing him from being ah! too loud. Yeah. 
He's dead. <laughs> We're okay about giving up our lives for the cause. And you're just like, I literally just tried to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, then we get a little bit further into it. We have to... Oh, this the tunnel? I had a little trouble, trouble with the tunnel. Uh, I think I eventually figured out... Like, I knew what yeah. I had to do. I just... Again, another just thing of timing. execution. The um, timing was hard, because I died a couple times trying to do that. Yep. It's really just run in there. And yeah, then... you, literally, you run in, and then you just hold down your right bumper, and you just yeah, your like shield. three seconds. Yeah. yeah, and getting the shield here was actually the shield ended up being another one of those mechanics like levitate that if you used it the right way, um, it could really change the game because especially like on the last boss fight, if you use the shield right, you just like it just made yeah. the last boss fight trivial because you could just shield yeah. block his attacks. Yeah, I watched you do that. <laughs> yeah, the energy yeah. bar lasts a long time with the shield. The destruction I, and terror continues as the, the hulking god godless child, child beast carves a bloody swath through our helpless city. I love that. And this whole presentation of, like, the news and the, the Navy um, bringing out what they're known for. Tanks! Um, no, no, no. It's That's that's at the end when they're uh, Air Force. Oh, Air yeah. Force. Yep. What they're most known, what the Navy's most known for, airplanes. <laughs> so I thought that was fun to, to kind of stomp my way through this giant city. It reminded me, there's another game that's like this that was an old school game where you were... A giant uh, beast destroying a, a town. Rampage, Rampage are, are yeah. Rampage or the Rugrats game where you're Reptar? Because there, there's <laughs> the a Reptar Rugrats. where you destroy everything yeah. level. Uh, <laughs> that's what this scene made me think of. Uh, no, I remember the Rampage game. I used to play that all the time in the like pizza, pizza the places with arcades. Wow, Rugrats! I can't believe I just heard that. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, let's see. We kill off all of the the airplanes. We hop our way over to the island, uh, where we have to fight Kochama. I love this. Co I love this Cochamera. giant Kochamara. Yeah, excuse me. I love this fight between us and Kochamara. Um, just like the ridiculousness of the two giant fighting uh, monsters, you know, in the middle of this town, stomping down buildings, and this this was He's a cool like fight. The superhero or the lungfish. And he's actually enslaving them. Coach Hammer. I actually thought this fight was uh, was one of the more fun um, boss fights compared to some of the other ones. Although, again, I had just come off of trying to fight the lungfish. So I was probably <laughs> eager for something I could actually figure out and like use mechanics to dodge instead of just having to guess what I had to do. Because this was pretty easy. You just kind of, you know. I mean, he, he choreographed every attack by saying, like, yeah. super punch or super... Yeah, he let you know. Well, you know, in true anime style, right? You can't you can't use your signature move before saying you're going to use your signature move. Yeah. This first one, this first part of it is actually a lot easier, I think, than the second part. Um, just because, obviously, he's shooting a beam at you. You're going to use shield to block it, and it ends up deflecting back at him. What actually is happening is he's no longer phased out when he does that. So he can take damage. And if you didn't really correlate, that was why. The second part, you may not have realized when he does his area attack, he actually is unfazed at that point, which he can do, take damage. So if you don't attack at the right time, then he can't take damage at all. Yeah, so I'll have to remember. Maybe we can skip ahead. Oh, not that far. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, because the second part is when he, yeah, you can see he's, he's still kind of like gray here. He's spin kicking around. And then when he does his uh, his mighty Air. ramming blow. It's his area attack that he does. I can't remember what he calls oh, it. Oh, yep. That's it. Hard right to there. counter area attack. And Hard yeah. to counter area attack. Yeah. And then he, he becomes unfazed. And unless you didn't, like, notice, you you might think that you're going to be doing all the damage in his other attacks. But, yeah, it's... This is At one one big bummer for me is is I accidentally skipped the cutscene. I killed him, and then I went to go climb up the tower, and I skipped the cutscene, so I didn't get to actually see what happened at the end of Lungfishopolis. Um, I think you told me, yeah. right, he comes back around and punches the tower, is that? He, he comes in to try to hit you, and you, like, dodge it, and he hits the tower and destroys the tower. And Linda is freed, which I thought that was kind of a fun little, uh, a fun little thing. Oh, my... Encryption is in. Okay, cool. So uh, that was the end of the uh, the lungfish one, um, which again I love that one. That was a really a really fun experience in Lungfishopolis. But it takes me to the Milkman conspiracy, and I thought the Milkman conspiracy was one that was uh, 
especially interesting to go into to Boyd's mind um, yeah. and see this like weird, twisted world. I thought this was a really cool, uh, interesting sort of thing to have, have going around. Um, Conspiracy theory world, essentially. Yeah, like I love like all of the cameras clicking and and the the just warped nature of this thing. Uh, one thing I absolutely hated about this level, though, is in order to proceed, and it says right before you go in, it's like, by the way, some memories have cobwebs, and in order to further progress, you're going to need the cobweb duster. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I hated having to go back and get the cobweb duster, because at this point I really hadn't turned anything in, so I didn't have any arrowheads at all. So I had to basically spend like an hour farming arrowheads, which really took me out of the experience because I was really enjoying it at this point, and then that really just kind of kind of bummed me. I feel out. like watching you, you had a way harder time like un like getting the arrowheads than I did with that uh, the, the dowsing, dowsing rod. rod. Yeah, the dowsing for me is like there were points where it was like really hard, like pressing the button, but like once you get in the right spot, it was fairly easy, and I could find them you know, fairly quickly and go from zone to zone to find them very quickly. And yeah. yeah. As soon as I got the dousing rod, I was already exploring like the bait in the main camp. And I just, I found so many arrowheads that I did, I bought everything I could and I didn't need to go back to camp after yeah. that. So I think once I got to Lungfish Opolis, I just never turned back. I just kept on going. Yeah. yeah. That, it was one of the first things I did as well as get that, as soon as I could get that dousing rod, because you had to actually be like level 20 as well to get the dousing rod. I got that, and then I started going around and just finding all the arrowheads I could get and uh, buying everything I needed. Yeah. I also like this ability you get here. It's so kind of quirky. The clairvoyance, yeah. Yeah. I almost never used it after this mission, though. Like, this it, is it's, about it's not, the only time I ever used it. Yeah, it's really not useful, but you get all sorts of like quirky things going on with like uh, seeing what other people see in different... Uh, not just in this zone, like just in different zones with all the different uh, creatures and enemies and stuff. They'll see something different. Like Nate did it at the end with the boss. He sees a slab of meat. Wait, so this is the part where I got hung up on and ended up mm -hmm. actually not not completing it after that point. Okay. How did you just walk past the guy? Because every time I tried to, he'd like kick me back. You, you have gotta to... have a specific item. So you see how you get the stop sign. Oh, and you you the like, stop. You're part you of the to... road crew, and then that, the other that's ones. It. You just have to hold it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you just have it in your hand. I'm it, a dumbass. This, that, that's... <laughs> I didn't this realize that I could open time. up those cars, though. Like, you see, I just mm -hmm. walked past that. So I didn't realize that there were more of the things I could pick up. And I spent so much time, like, running around, like, okay, what like, what can I do here? Like, who can I talk to? How can I progress? Um, which was that combined with the fact that I had to go back and get the, uh, the um, cobweb duster is what really slowed me down on this one. I think this probably was the level that took me the most time. Um, but subsequently, when I figured everything out, I kind of actually felt like this was probably my favorite, just because you it also, was... Yeah, you also realized you couldn't go into the house. I had to tell you you could go into the house. Yeah, I didn't realize I could open up the doors to the houses. But I love being mm -hmm. able to, like, jump from the floor to the ceiling here. and the. You did the... figure out the... Uh, is it the post office? Or... The... Yeah, the, yep. You figured out the security key thing a lot quicker than I thought you would. Like, you you kind of knew, like, right away what to do. I remember spending hours there trying to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do. Even when I replayed the game, I couldn't remember what I was, what I was supposed to do, and it took me forever. Like, I went back and forth through this zone multiple times until I realized how to do that. Yeah, because I feel like I got I got here, and I was like, okay, like, can I hit it? Can I punch it? Like, how do I, how do I get you can in actually, here? You can actually interact with that keypad. Yeah, so when I when I realized like I could use clairvoyance on the keypad and I saw myself as a giant finger, which I thought that was really funny by the way. Um, <laughs> but once I figured that out, I was kind of like, okay, now how I, like how can I how can I use that? So I spent a little bit of time like running around, just kind of looking for other ways in, and you know, I I, don't, I forget what I exactly did. I think I I think you punched you the punched, door. You ended up punching the doors, but if you interact with the keypad and you just hit enter, he'll come out and inspect as well. Ah, okay, that must be it. Yeah, so I, I remember being a little confused here, but then yeah, eventually figuring this one out. Which Carson, did you did you get this pretty quickly too? This puzzle was no, no. I had to Google how to do this actually. Uh, I, had to, I had to Google where to find the items. Like I didn't know I could. Like you said, I didn't know I had to open the trunks of the cars. 
I didn't know I could go into the buildings. So I didn't know where to find the next item, like to get past the next people in, in line to like progress. So I had to actually Google it to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do. Yeah, I could see this when I tried to throw the mailbox at the door. I think I'm starting to get frustrated here. Like, oh, oh yeah, there we go. So I, I got up on my, my bubble and knocked and on the door. Caught. It got caught right away. Um, but then I think I realized that maybe if I hit the door or something, maybe I hit the keypad. Yeah, there you... we go. Eventually, yeah. And at this point, I saw I saw him like using the keypad, and I was like, "All right, yep, I got, I know what I got to do. We got it." Um, so that that one I was able to figure. And I thought this was really cool too, just because this is really the only chance you really get to use the clairvoyancy spell, um, like in a puzzle. I know it comes up a couple other times, but like this was just a very interesting way to to show this puzzle. Um, so I thought this was cool, and then the boss fight that comes later on uh was was also you know interesting but i thought it was one of those things like once you use clairvoyancy um that boss fight actually got to be pretty easy the spider the spider lady mm -hmm. this is yeah where you realize frustrated there yep well yep. It, maybe if i just a, hit it enough time he doesn't have the cobweb duster at this point and i had told him that he'd need it and then he still goes through this level for a while until he decides to go finally get it yep but I thought this level was a really good one, um, just a kind of a an interesting use of the clairvoyance spell and, and another interesting mind to see within the uh, the world. Uh, and I, then, go ahead. I was just gonna say I really enjoyed the uh, the milkman conspiracy just because of how warped and twisted it was and mm -hmm. all the different things. Like there were so many layers to it. You had to keep going and progressing and getting the different items to figure it out, but. I think I died on that one more than any other ones because I tried to use the levitation and jump from place to place. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and yep. I would just miss. And I didn't know exactly how the gravity would work. So uh -huh. like how it would twist. I thought I could jump over there. And no, it would just drop me straight down. I probably died six, seven times before I figured out that I was just supposed to jump this little tiny gap right there. Hmm. Overall, so the like Boyd's mind was just like great to me. And he he was probably one of my favorite characters just because of how ridiculous he is yeah i do like his character probably the best out of all the ones that like you go into the minds of is i do like his what uh which which mm -hmm. one did you guys do after in the insane asylum like what oh, was I the did... next one for you did you do glorious theater first yeah i did glorious theater. yeah so i didn't even think to like get into her mind i just like met her and i was like oh cool like i'll just walk on mm -hmm. by i'll keep going uh so i actually did waterloo world first um, but I think that Glorious Theater is kind of like the, the starting point, so that's that's where we'll go here. Um, I, I actually forgot that you could get in people's minds at this point. I think I maybe had stopped and came back the next day or like the next week or something, so I had forgotten how to get into people's minds. So I was running around the insane asylum just like getting brains and like doing stuff and couldn't figure out what to do. And then eventually I wound up using the bacon, which is like the hint system, which makes board pop up and tell you what to do. And, and I was like, oh, I'm yep. stupid. The entire point of the game is to get into people's brains, and I forgot that entire part. <laughs> yeah, so I, I liked this one for the differentness that it had, right? This one was unique in that um, it, it wasn't so much driven by, like, combat or platforming itself as it was just kind of sitting and watching the stories unfold. So it was it was unique for that element, but it was also the reason why I think this was one of my least favorite levels, because in order to... It was trial and error. Like you really, yeah. there wasn't anything I told that you could really figure it out exactly on like, you know, how to complete it. You yep. just had to do it in the right order and have the right thing going on at the right time. Yeah, so we had to meet Gloria, and then in order to to get her to go on, we had to to put on these different things and get rid of the phantom. I think was the the main goal. Which that that alone, I love the phantom of the opera throwback there with with that setup. I thought that was pretty fun. Um, and you're right, the, the mechanic of having to just trial and error on these was not nearly as much fun as I think that the developers were hoping it would be. Um, the, uh, the enemies on the dark side were, like, scarily, uh, they, they did quite a bit of damage if you didn't really oh, yeah. deal with them. The spinning, so the spinning top ones especially, because when you try to shoot them, it would just bounce right off. Yep. And then if they hit you, it just take a ton of damage. So it I is love... funny though the the fire ones could actually damage those guys. Yeah, I like thought if, that was cool. The dogs, the dogs would actually damage the other enemies if they breathe fire. 
So it was fun to it was fun to see the uh, the critic here, very very like Muppets esque, sitting up in the rafters, uh, <laughs> railing on people. He gives you the plays, which this was it, that was kind of an interesting way to switch between the scenes where you had to find the playbook. Um, and I did like the puzzles here of like using the knight to kill the dragon and and using the the boat to kind of change scenes. Um, but all in all, this this ended up kind of being more of a more of a pain than I wanted it to be. Uh, let me yeah. skip ahead a bit here to the. Dun, 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 dun. Eventually, I remember I had to go through like everything in order to to finally find out how to get up there. Um, I think I I think I missed it when I first went for the hot air balloon to get up into the rafters, and then I had to go back and loop through all the different plays. Um, but yeah, eventually getting up into the rafters. It was fun to have the uh, fun to have the platforming back. Although <laughs> this particular part right here I had a lot of troubles with. I think this was actually the first time that I game overed um, or get, like, got kicked out of somebody's mind because I was just having the, the biggest problem with one of the jumps um, and I ended up losing all of my all of my health bars to get through it. Um, oh, that was another thing was how it, it would just screw you over if you missed one jump repeatedly. Like there was no coming back. Like right there you just barely miss it. There's like no forgiveness. You're just yep. like, yeah, like it, it would have been better, I think, maybe if it like took away um, a set <laughs> a set number of hearts instead of like taking away whole life. But yeah, you can see here. I think I did that like three times in a row, and um, all of these enemies here, I think, might have killed me once. So I eventually got out, them all ground pounded out. Uh, but then eventually, I make my way through. I die a couple more times. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Last life. I'm probably not gonna make this jump. Oh, perfect, easy. Um, so yeah, getting getting through this level was a little bit trickier. But then once you once you got the secret of the uh, the spotlights down, um, that that made the actual boss fight itself pretty trivial. Just because, for me at least, I went up there and I put in all of the candles and then just lit them one at a time. Uh, so this this boss fight actually, even though I think I did die during it, uh, ended up being kind of a, a fun but yet easy one. To, uh, to finish off. Yeah, oh, that's right. I lit all of the candles first and then started attacking <laughs> him. And then, of course, he goes and extinguishes them all. So I did do this fight a couple times. But the real trick to this one I found was was when you were floating up, you didn't want to get uh, get sniped by the, the words. No, that was, that was an issue as well. I, I wound up just standing still until he shot and then moved slightly. Yep, that was, that was the on. trick I did as well. Well, it, it, it doesn't lock on, but it... Uh, it inter like it knows where you're going to go. So if you start yeah. moving one direction and you don't stop moving that direction, you'll get hit. So I thought that was a good way for them to, to do that boss fight. And I love the uh, I loved his like words that he's firing at you. So if you look at him, it's like pedantic, shallow, <laughs> derivative. Um, so I thought it was fun to to fight the critic off in Gloria's mind. Uh, ooh, here we go, Waterloo World. This one, this one, I actually thought was very different from everything else right this one's basically a uh it's basically a um, tabletop game yeah a tabletop game that you're playing right so if i get this situated here where's waterloo world at yeah so you guys didn't get the chance to see this one aaron goose you also didn't get to see this one did you so this yeah this is the one that as i because i was like okay i'm not gonna finish this let me at least have a familiarity with what's going on and this is one of the ones that I was pretty interested in. I was like, huh. Because I, I am going to eventually finish this, but I, I'm really looking forward to playing this one just because of the whole tabletop effect to it. Yeah, yeah I thought... To, so you had to recruit different pieces. So you had to go to, like, one of the people needed food. The other one needed money. People needed to, like, hear that the people up in, like, the, the real world still cared about them. So you had to go out of the game and go talk to the guy. And then... You wind up recruiting pieces and you move them with telepathy. This is one with Napoleon so, in it, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Napoleon there. So this one actually having to go up and talk to, um, uh, what was his name? Who was the actual guy? Does anybody remember? Uh, Orderly Bonaparte. I don't remember his first name. Yeah. Orderly Bonaparte. Having to go up and talk to him, um, I did not realize that I could just climb up a ladder on the game board so i actually went all the way out like back to agent ford's lair and then all the way back and that that slowed me down a little bit i, I wish that i could have figured out how to get out of the game because i was mm -hmm. just sitting here like 
okay, I realized I had to get up, but I couldn't find the way to do it. Um, so that, that took me a little bit of time. But once I, once I got that figured out, this was a fun... I love the hexes. It felt very like uh, Cities and Knights of Catan style, you know, playing through a board game. So this was this was definitely a cool level with some fun platforming in it, um, and like dodging this guillotine with invisibility was neat. Yeah, uh, things like that that like you have to realize what ability you need to use to get by. Like, there's they, a lot of things in build, invisibility is very useful for. Yeah, this was definitely far enough into the game too where they just kind of expected you to like. You know, there really wasn't any sort of hint at all. Uh, so whenever I came across something I thought that I couldn't do, I just kind of sat and looked at all my spells, and I was like, all right, can I levitate it? Can I go invisible? Can I, you know, light it on fire? Um, and uh, eventually one of them would work. So it was it was yeah. nice to have the, the puzzle style solving um, in that regard that just really was not forgiving. And I think that's something that a lot of new games today are missing. Right, people kind of take for granted the difficulty of old games because they didn't they didn't really walk you through a lot of stuff. They kind of expected you to figure it out. I um, it, I was a victim of that on this one because I'm so <laughs> used to the newer ones giving me that information, and like, and that was one of the things I had with the boss fights. I'm like, I, why am I still trying to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do with this? And uh, and then I, I, I had to remind myself that, you know, back in the game, back in the day, we didn't get the answers. And no. It was all like that. That, that is true. You couldn't just solved. go on Google and look up how to do it either. <laughs> that was the other thing. And Did... I I hate going on Google and I hate watching walkthroughs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then this game, I found myself going on IGN and like, hey, uh, how do I do this? What do I need to do? I'm like, damn it. This is... Uh, I got I got soft in the years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's I I love games that don't like tell you how to do anything. They just you know kind of throw you out there and you have to figure it out yourself, or you you have to find like you know read through maybe in certain stuff that the game might give you to learn about it. But it's really about like seeing your environment and just be and looking at like okay what's there and what abilities do I have and just you know maybe experimenting some, but. Uh, trial and error, I don't like, like, okay, I'm going to use this ability, and then I'm going to use this ability, and just going through the list until I find one that works. I like, It's just, I like looking at the, the world and seeing, like, what's going on. Like, one that I like specifically think of is, Nate, the, uh, the one with the doors mm -hmm. when you're climbing the tower, and yeah. you're trying to hit the doors, or and then you're trying to light the doors on fire until you realized that you could use telepathy. Yeah. That one was a struggle for me because you had two different windows there um, to look through. And there's a chair propped holding that door shut. And I felt like when you were doing it, you were just kind of like, you were just going through the same things over and over again. And it's like, what's the definition of insanity? <laughs> it's doing the same thing over and over again. Expecting, expecting different, different results, yeah. Different, different results. And that's that's really what... The, this type of gameplay is like it's like you want to like if you're going to do the same thing and over and over again it's not going to change like it's it's not working for you but it's you got to kind of look at what's around and i think if you would have taken the time at like that specific point to look around like look in that window and then look at that window and then realize why the door is shut why you can't open the door and that there's a chair there that maybe you would have thought oh it now the the fire thing would have I think I don't know if you could have lit it on fire or not I, that's I think it, it did reason. not work it yeah. didn't I, no okay I felt like that Somebody could have been a reasonable to try it. I feel like that could have been a reasonable response to it because it was a wooden chair but then the other thing is like well you need to move it so obviously telepathy to throw the chair away but I, it's like I love that kind of stuff like figuring that stuff out to me is like the most rewarding part of any game yeah. It's like, it it is rewarding. I I don't know. Maybe it was just because it was like a, a such a new style for me. It, it's I think it's yeah. hard to get into if you're not if you haven't done it in a while. Like, yeah. It's like you're you don't expect games to do that to you anymore. And it, it's an older game, but I mean it's just you're not used to it. I wish more games were like. Yeah. There 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 is a hint system in this game though. It's yeah. The bacon. Wait, That's you true. Wait the bacon. And it'll tell you. I I had to use it a few times just to yeah. figure out if I had to go invisible or if there are like audio cues. They'll say. Oh, the guillotine will stay closed if it can see you, or something like that. There are a few little audio cues that you can like kind of 
there think are about a it. Few, oh, yeah. yeah, there are actually a few times where he'll actually give you a voice, uh, like without a, while you're in the middle of the fight, tell you, hey, why don't, why don't you try this? That's um, how it was for me on the final boss. <laughs> yeah, on the, on the final boss with running up the arm because I kept on trying to do it and I kept on failing. I knew that's what I needed to do, but I kept on failing at it. And then at one point, he's like, why don't you try running up the arm and punching him in the face? I'm like, that's what I'm trying to do. But like, he only does that like a few times within the whole game without you prompting to ask him. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I used the prompt system at all. Like, I think I might have used it maybe one or two times total in the whole game. Okay. I did try telling really you about bad. it a couple of times, but... Yeah. Here's a question for you guys. Uh, this this part right here in Waterloo World, um, how do you get over there to that other side? Can you just levitate jump between these two? Why didn't I think of that? I can yeah. probably do that. Well, yeah, you can levitate jump. God, this. why didn't I think of that? Uh, I actually wound up going around the back side. So back where you were up to, like, back on the right, Mm -hmm. I levitated, jumped from there, like all the way in the backside, up into the castle. So I kind of did it. Ah, but you got into the castle? Yeah. Interesting. Because you got to be on the outside to remove that pin, don't you? Yeah, but I, I got inside from uh, way before when I was just exploring. Like I went up on top of yeah, right so there, I, essentially, and levitated, I think... jumped in. I ended up cheating by using this windowsill here, and I like jumped off of the windowsill. Here we go. Yeah, so I used this windowsill. And then I did a levitate jump off of that to uh, to finally get up there. Yeah, there's um, little quirks like that you can find. <laughs> and the, the well. fact that you didn't throw the guy off, so you kept on getting shot. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Oh! oh, works like a charm. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> throw him in the water. Yeah, so that that's a thing that I actually kind of like. Like, I like that there are little tiny glitch spots that you can use perfectly within the game without, like, cheating to uh, to kind of move forward. Because I think that's really fun, and it opens up a lot of speedrunning avenues for a game like this, where you could you could foreseeably go back and play this game in, you know, a normal person could probably beat it, like, in three hours if they played well. Yeah. Kind of like a Mario 64 where you do a backflip in the right spot, you'll face through the level and get a star immediately. Yep. There's actually there's a way of skipping the whole uh, the whole infirmary, like all all three of the bosses inside here. Really? Uh, yeah, you can skip that. Really? Hmm. Yeah. I, I saw it on speedrun. I can't exactly remember how he did it, but. So I thought that that was fun, and then uh, I, Rod, I think you said that you didn't like the next level, Black Velvetopia. It's because I had a bad experience with it. I got lost in this level the very first time. Mm -hmm. And I could not, I was like, I got so lost and I had no idea where I was at or where I needed to go. I think I had taken a break or something in this. Um, but like the first time, I was so frustrated with this map. It was very frustrating because that if you made one little misstep, that ball would just smack you back the entire way. Yeah. And then like something that I think, I don't know if Nate, you and I talked about this. It doesn't really tell you you need to go do that little mini mission at all or even a, like, before you do the last, uh, oh, the last confusion wrestler. grenades, yeah, that's yeah. like, uh, so if you get into that fight, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, so I ended up doing that. I I kind of went through the thing here, um, was trying to figure out how to progress because oh no, this is the part where I have to go back for more arrowheads. Ugh. All right, so I got yeah. the arrowheads. I bought the paintings, um, and then you keep going through and you're doing these these wrestling matches, which I got into the last one that. that you know, you said that you're not supposed to go into until you have the confusion. And I, I just couldn't figure it out. Like, it, yeah. it didn't make much sense. And they, they didn't really warn you saying, like, you know, you won't be able to do this without uh, without having this ability. So I'm trying to... Yeah, even, even when you use the bacon, it doesn't tell you. Because what did it tell you, Nate? Yeah, so I'm here now. This is this is the fight against the snake guy. Um, and he talks to you about how, oh, you can't, you can't break my concentration. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I can pick him up. Maybe I can you know, go invisible long enough for him to lose interest. Um, and I think I ended up talking to Ford and he, I think he said something not helpful. Like you need, you need something else to do this, but it, it didn't explicitly say like, it said know, something about you needed a higher level for a badge, Yep. but it didn't tell you what badge. Yeah. So then I thought like, okay, maybe I need to have like an enhanced, uh, firepower or something. Like I just need to level up and grind out something. So I turned in some, I turned in some, uh, 
psy cards and spider webs and stuff, and I did level up a little bit, but then I still went back in. I think, actually, this is where I had to ask you, like, am I doing the right I, thing, or am I well, just killing time? I, at that point, I was like, when you went back and you turned in the stuff and all it did was give you an upgrade for your side blast, I was like, huh. And I couldn't remember how I beat the game, so I actually had to Google that. And I was yeah. like, oh, right. Um, and then told you you had to go do that side quest. Um, yeah, so I even came back in again and tried to fight yeah. him a second time with my new enhanced abilities. That didn't work. Yeah, I think by the time I figured it out and told you, you had just jumped in there. But Yeah, so if you go around and you talk to, to the Matador, this guy with his big purple chin, um, you he gives you this confusion grenade. But that, that definitely didn't feel right, because the painting was before the ladder, so my instruction was, okay, jump into the painting. Let's fight the guy, and then we'll move forward. Um, that's, that's what I was thinking, too. Like I, I fought him a couple times, just thinking that I just wasn't doing enough damage or something, and then... I had to Google it again, and it told me I had to get the Good old Google. grenades, and then as soon as I got the grenades, it was trivial again. Yeah, yep, yeah. super easy. You could actually just grenade him, attack him two times, and then grenade him again, and uh, he would never come un unconcussed. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, this map, like, I love the art style, this, this, this actual yeah. level. I thought it was so really much cool. Videos, I liked it, too. I was like, man, this, yeah. is, this is really neat, especially, I mean, especially just that guy alone, like a Mephisto-type the uh, appearance. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole art level is really cool. The kind of vibrant colors and of the dark and the brights and stuff. Like artistically, it just looks really neat. Um, it's not just the level too. I mean, you can tell Raz, the character, actually his model has changed. Yeah, well, his, which yeah, is he's, cool. I don't yeah. think that happened in any other levels either. Maybe I missed it, but this was the only one where I noticed that he, his character yeah, think, design actually changes. I think yeah. it did. It was just wasn't as stark as this one was. I think this is the only one that actually has anything specific color-wise, because this is the only one that actually has anything that's relevant to color. Yeah. Um, you know, this is an art artist, so it's an artistic uh, mm. view of the level. So, I mean, it's the only one that whether it really makes sense to have a different art look of the character. But, um, yeah, I didn't like this this level mostly because, like, it's I got lost in it. Like where I was supposed to go, mm -hmm. a lot of the places look very similar. Um, so like, I think at one point I had a hard time finding like the last uh, card or the last uh, queen, um, yep. and I got I just got lost in the level uh, the first time I did this. But I did think the the whole Elodio the bull being uh, Edgar and like his jealousy was I actually really didn't expect that to be the uh, the angle. Mm -hmm. I probably should have when I realized that he had, you know, the bull has the exact same uh, mustache beard, beard combo beard. that uh, that he does. But but this was kind of fun. I liked I liked using the uh, the telekinesis to throw the bandoliers and um, and then having to use the concussion grenade to uh, confuse the the bullfighter into con thinking that yeah. he was the bull. I thought that was a just an interesting thing. Um, so th this this fight overall, and actually this whole level, um, once I got past having to go in and out, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, this was actually probably my third favorite level of all of them. Elodio, the colorful, the colorful one. Um, let's see. We talked about Waterloo. We talked about Gloria's spot. That means and we're on to the last. Did... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, before we before we skip out of this, it did feel really good, like going through the different ones, those three ones where you're essentially going into people who are mentally unstable, and then you're just like fixing their problems. Like, mm -hmm. Right. It, it wound up feeling really good once I finished them all, and they were just like, "Well, let's go home." Yeah, we're all perfectly like, just, normal now. They were just fixed and ready to go. Te technically, you didn't really fix the milkman. Um, he, he left though. He 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 wasn't there anymore. It wasn't in. It wasn't until the end where he actually like throws the uh burning when he jet. burns it all down yeah that he like pops finished out of his... it and something weird happens to him but finished his route <laughs> yeah the milk was finished his did route. i just hear a bottle cap i hope so that was good i was gonna say Speaking nobody should be caps, nobody should i just be. opened up this gluten-free double dark l oh there you go of belgium and it's uh <laughs> pretty damn good is it so actually like... gluten-free so it uses buckwheat and sour gum with hops rather than uh, wheat. Any uh, wheats. Normal wheat, yeah. Yeah. 
this this part of this level annoyed me because those little rats oh I yeah hear, i could hear them but i could but never not... turn my camera fast enough to, to shoot them so they would just take half my life when four they did so had. much damage i was amazed how much damage those little rats did yeah the rats are very annoying this this was a like a change i felt like a really big change to like what you had been doing um up to this point because you were basically just going into levels and now you're in the real world doing platforming yep. and this is something that i had a little problem with um with the game itself is i don't like i said i was going to talk about this uh, later which is it's probably appropriate is i feel like the game got rushed towards the end maybe they didn't have enough time to really finish things like there's parts of the story that weren't really polished or complete like missing mm -hmm. um like they just kind of say, "Oh, Raz is from." Everybody apparently knows that Raz was from the circus, but this is only one day. This is the first day that he's there. Like he hasn't been there the whole time, and he's his dad's supposed to be picking him up tomorrow. Um, so everybody knows, like some for some reason that he's from the circus without him ever actually saying anything. Um, gameplay wise, like there's things with the levitation, especially on this level, that allow you to skip things. Mm -hmm. Um, which feels broken to me doing that, like giving oh, you abilities that like, allow you to just break the game the way that they, it was intended. And yeah, then like just this jump design. right here, I think the perfect yeah, example this, of being able to just like not have. This is the way I did it too, though. Oh, was um, it? Yeah, but this this level, I feel like it doesn't give you a very good way of finding which direction you're supposed to go. Like you get lost in here very easily and it doesn't lead you like you need to go this way or that way or like the part where you get stuck nate oh yeah sense. right here makes makes some oh yeah that this part where you get stuck this was funny but i mean the part where you didn't realize you could climb on that fence they don't really tell you you can do that yeah, yeah like i'm like this uh yeah like called? straight part across the over there and then there's this just to get up to there like you've you've never experienced anything like that before so it's it's very difficult yep. um there's there's actually a couple places back at the camp um like if you're trying to get all the cards and stuff <laughs> so this is just me um, being stuck for like 30 minutes and i teleport back to the same spot and i'm still stuck yeah so there, there's actually a place back at the the camp um where you're trying to get cards where there's a mesh like stuff on the wall mm -hmm. that you can climb and you can't see it but apparently, and you can barely see that chain link like right in front of you, where you needed to climb to get to that point. But yeah. yeah, so this is where I eventually realized that like, oh, I have to actually climb on this stuff instead of just uh, just looking you at it. You hadn't used that since Oleander's initial training. Yep. Yeah. At least not to my knowledge. So you just forget if you had waited a few days or a week or so. So yeah, so he does this multiple times. Yeah, right Comes there. But this, yeah, that part right there, like you don't even, it's hard to see and you don't even realize that you can climb on that. And that's, that part of that map frustrates, I don't know, frustrated me a little bit because it's like, it, it's not really showing it to you well enough to know that you can interact with it. Yep, but, could have been better. To, like all they had to do was have just the small one that you had to climb up earlier in the level and then we would have known. Yeah. This is where the controls and the camera especially kind of get to me because you're trying to, turn some places and you're trying to do specific the, things but you just can't yep. yeah Don't there's parts how. with the parts with the camera that i feel is really this part was what i was talking about with the chair like you're there and you see it but you didn't really stop to look at it yeah so you, you kept on thinking it was the door but um the camera is frustrating on the parts especially like on the last on the last map where you're you have the guys that throw the knives and the camera snaps to a different direction. Yep. And it can do that while you're still jumping. So then you end up moving off and dying. It's there's just little things with the camera that just weren't done very well. It's not optimized well enough. And that maybe that has to do with like I don't know if other games had that similar issue back in this uh, in 2005 if it wasn't like polished enough yet. Yeah. But, I kind of felt like Dr. Lobato here was a bit of a letdown. Like, we, right. we basically walk right into his lair. Wouldn't you want to go into that guy's brain? Yeah, yeah. Like, 
I mean, the level he'd have would be interesting. He doesn't even try and like do anything with us. He doesn't fight us. He's just kind of like, oh, you're here. Great. Grab him. This, this is why I felt like the the game got rushed at the end and they cut some story stuff. Because yeah. I feel like you missed some story here. And there's some other stuff throughout that you feel like they introduce like things that yeah. apparently you know, but they've never really touched in the game at all. So it's like, how do we know this? I also don't like how they don't let you know that this is the point of no return. Because after this point, you can't go back to camp, you can't talk to anybody else, you can't get all the collectibles that are there, you can't turn in any of your side cards. They just kind of throw you into it. And then even after you beat the game, you still don't get to go back. Like that was an issue with me that the point of no return was really no return. It, did, yeah, it does make an autosave though, doesn't it? It does make an autosave saying no return when you go into uh, the final battle. Yeah, but it, I don't yeah. think you can go back to no, before you, then. Yeah, you can't really go back to like to the real world to collect stuff. You can still go back and get enter other people's yeah. minds because you use the smelling salts. And um, one, of, one of the one of the achievements on Steam at least is to take the turtle and show it to everybody in the camp, which you can't do if you progress four minutes past you get the turtle oh interesting yes. mr pokey lope i love mr yeah. pokey lope yeah that was so funny when he actually mr. starts pokey lope loves you too baby oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah there you actually can turn in all your cobwebs and your side cards though there's a uh a fortune teller machine just before you go into the first part of the level i thought that was just for the brains uh it takes all the cobwebs and side cards i believe as well Nate, I remember watching Nate do that. Yep, yep, so. I got that. This, I I this, brains, puzzle, but... this puzzle was pretty... Like, this whole part here at the end, I do agree, Rod, was probably kind of rushed. Because it just kind of felt like, a, like, oh, okay. Get... I'll take this takes... cake that's very clearly here, and then I'll use it to get Pokelope. It takes so long for you to get up there, and then you, like, don't do anything up there. It's like, with the characters, or... It just... Uh... No. Yeah, I feel like there was one more, at least one more level just missed there. Getting into that guy's brain, maybe, I don't know. Dr. Lobato was like a side thought, almost. They were like, we're going to make this the main villain. And they were like, mm, maybe not. Yep. And then and then the way he dies, too. Like, Pokelope just... jumps in the machine, and the machine, I guess, explodes. And then well, Dr. He, Lobato's he him. plot he device removed. Him with the... Yeah, he, he uses the machine to shoot him. It's, one of the, it's a uh, prototype of the tank. Ah, okay, all right. And then he's just gone. The guy who's stealing brains all game is just gone. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get the uh, we get the final battle against uh, against Coach um, and his tank, right? So yeah. I thought I thought this was kind of uh, interesting yeah. with the the gas leak and then Boyd blowing the whole place up. Um, yeah, that was funny. And this this psychic battle looked pretty cool. I was a little disappointed we didn't get to take part in that. Ford comes down. I love that he's got his his giant. Uh, piece of Sionium strapped to his back to keep himself did, sane. Um, did, you, did you explore enough to see all the different uh, versions of him? I don't know if I saw all of them. I remember a lot of them, but not maybe not all yeah. of them. There was the cook, there was the admiral, there, were, there was a groundskeeper that was raking stuff up. Yeah, there was a ranger, uh, and then there, obviously, the canoe guy. Mm -hmm. um, but... There was, I don't know, Nate, if you realize, but there was actually a scavenger hunt that you were participating in. There was one, yeah. I chose to not participate in said yeah. scavenger hunt. I got half of them, and then I, I, I got get the rest. Yeah, I think I ended up getting all of them and then forgetting to go back before I went into the last level. Yeah. So yeah, this that was that was one of the things that I that I wrote down as as yeah i enjoyed how the collectibles and all that stuff fit into the game and the theme and the story all that stuff but there was way too much of it well yeah like in the in the maps and stuff with all the uh mm. cobwebs and the uh arrowheads yeah projections arrow. and the, the projections the projections, the projections i thought were there were insane like the amount of projections <clears throat> were just nuts but as, as much as much psi items you had to collect to to upgrade things on top of all of the other stuff that you can collect, I was like, okay, this is getting excessive. And it was, you know, I I don't do a lot of projects because of my perfectionism. You know, if there's too much stuff that that interferes with my completionism, 
then it's like, oh, this is going to be more. This is more of a job yeah. than it is a game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I there was a five hundred nin roots. Like, I don't yeah. want to deal with that. that just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the one the part at least about the scavenger hunt is it kind of makes you explore the rest of the camp. Um, yeah. Which I thought is I love. I, you know, I think that was like an incentive to get you to kind of explore and talk to the different people in the different areas and see different things. But uh, I, I, yeah, I didn't look at, and I rarely look this way, that way. Like you just mentioned it. I always look at it as something I have to do. <laughs> right. And then it starts deterring away. That's why like whenever I play uh, MOs, when things start to become a grind, I, nope. It, that's when things stop. Yeah, that's why I was hoping for a like an after game where I could go and collect all those things so I wouldn't be taken out of the story. I would yeah. be able to go back later and pick up yeah. all of those Which, scavenger uh, items and whatnot. I don't know if this is a form to mention other games, but like the uh, the newer um, um, Lara Croft uh, Tomb, Raider. Tomb Raider games. Like after you complete the, the whole story and stuff, then it says, okay now you can go finish everything else and complete the maps honestly if you I, want i hated that at least in the second one i felt I, like dude, I love in, it. in that game i i hated the fact that they didn't include a lot of those tomes as part of your like what you needed to do to progress right. the, i hated that it was a side quest i hate i think that's good for people like me though that i'm going to i i want to complete that but i could still i could still see the story and have a sense of success and complete the story and still take my time on, yeah. on, on doing the other items because yeah. if like this one right here i was too focused on this other stuff that i well i never completed it yeah, yeah the collectibles and stuff isn't a big deal it's just i i always hated like the big uh like the act the um oh the hidden uh temples and stuff that yeah, 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 yeah. i kind of wished in that game they were more a part of like the I guess that's what they, they do it with the replayability of a game and, you know, because people want more and more and more hours. They but, want to complete yeah. the MMOs. Eventually, at a certain point, like, on the, in here, it's just I ignored picking up the uh, projections. It's yep. Just, if I happen to run through them, I would, but I definitely wouldn't seek them out. I don't know if you guys <laughs> ever noticed, but if you hit, uh, if you went to the menu or, or whatever, it would tell you how many of each were in the zone. Um mm -hmm. Including, like, if you're in the camp in each zone, it would tell you how many of each things you could collect in that zone. So you knew, like, how many you had left in there. But, yeah, this is the guy, actually, that you talked to, and he just turned in all those side cards. Yep. With his uh, robotic Vogue thing he's got yeah. going on. <laughs> Oh, and okay. So this is the this is the start of the this is the start of the end. I, I will consider this to be part of the boss fight. This is the platforming part, right? So. This having oh. having to make have to having to make it up to this guy right now i know you said that this was a problem for you um the timing I, thing yeah and the camera and just trying to be quick and yeah so this this one was pretty frustrating to me as well because i you're supposed to pick up the bunny rabbit and make him make Oli like pick it up mm -hmm. and go to the next spot i didn't know that in the first spot I thought I was supposed to beat the entire thing before he died. So <laughs> I did as much of the platforming as I could. I made it like all the way to the top almost. And then like nothing happened. And again, had to look it up and it told me I had to like get him up there. I was like, are you kidding me? I had spent probably 30, 40 minutes trying to do the platforming all while he, before he would die the first time. Oop. This part, I was like, Nate, what are you doing? He's I kind of in, <laughs> yeah. into the goddamn uh, meat grinder. Forgot that that was the meat grinder. Thought maybe it was a cannon to like launch me up higher. <laughs> I mean, uh... nah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've got we've got this voice that's talking to us this whole time. This this disembodied voice. Is that supposed to be our actual dad trying to like find us with his uh yes. his projection? Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, I never even noticed. Yeah, because that's at the at the end you see the projection say like Rasputin in that voice, and he like pops through the projection. So that's what it is the entire time, which gotcha. got really annoying to me halfway through. Yeah, and especially when you're like you're like trying to rush through this, not having checkpoints on this too, like really got frustrating. Because if you failed on the fourth, the you know the last one, you'd have to go back and do all of the ones over again. Um, 
so I was I was happy to have this done. I liked the I liked the knife throwing uh, mm-hmm. circle thing. I thought that was a really cool mechanic, but I did not like how time sensitive it was. Especially later when there were three or four bunny rabbits beating on Ollie. Yeah. Yep. At, so. le- at least he got his health back each time he went to the new platform. Yeah. I will say there is a trick to doing that, and you want to actually be on the left side, jumping up, so it gets it to the outer edge easier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to basically get him to throw it at me while I was falling to try. Falling, and... yeah. It's a lot easier to time it if you're, like, on the, on the side rather than jumping towards the center. Yep. And fail. Oh, oh well, Oli's gonna die on this one. Oh, there he goes. So yeah, I had I had a bit of trouble making it through this one. Eventually got through though, and then let's see, we'll keep skipping. Da, 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 da. Yep, there we go. Uh, this was this was cool. I like this rail grinding thing. Um, you did a... this so much better than I did. Yeah. The first time. Oh my god, I was awful uh, with this. I kept every time I jump. I would. I guess I was jumping too early because it would not snap me to the rail. I would just fly off the edge. You just jump off, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I had one spot where I jumped a little too late there, and then uh, I think I got it like on the second try. So it was it was a fun little. Uh... There you go. Whoop! Got, got a little lucky on that last one. Um, so yeah, that was a that was a fun way to end the the platforming part because then we then we got to do this fight more times than I wanted to. Um, yeah, it took me a bit to figure out to wait until he, he cleavers down and then jump up on his shoulder. I was trying to, like, kite him into the middle of the meat grinder. I was trying to <laughs> light him on fire. Um, but, yeah, eventually. Shoot him in the face. Yep, shoot him in the face. Um, eventually, though, just waited for the right opportunity to uh, to strike. Oh, my God, get it. Oop. Oh. Ah. Ah. Nope. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, having... they even highlighted his ears to make it be like, this is where you need to be attacking. Yeah. The comically yeah, large ears. But yeah. yeah they're it... a different color than the rest of the body, too. I mean, it's just like... Because this got a little nerve-wracking for me because I had one hit point left, and I really wanted to uh, to get him down without having to start over again because he was already on the last life point. So I remember uh, this was a bit of a an actual challenge. that I it was a, It was a fun fight, and then we get to... We get to do more platforming, and then we get to do the fight again. So, you know, having to redo the boss fights, kind of like the lungfish um, fight, I, I felt like, okay, we've kind of played this out. We know what's going on. Um, this this part of platforming, I kind of felt like we'd already accomplished. So, you know, I was okay to do it, but it, again, felt kind of repetitive of the trying to save Ollie platforming. I think maybe it just feels compa- uh, repetitive because... There really isn't a whole lot of repetitive stuff in the game. Like each level usually is fairly unique. Yep. So this is like the only level where you're mo- you're having to do the same platforming over and over again, and it's not not having you use like see there the fucking camera. I hate oh, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was actually skipping ahead to get to the point that I could talk about this. This part where you had to jump between the uh, the nets um, yep. got got me quite a few times just because you had to jump immediately, double jump, and then play around the camera and hope that you could find a way to connect it. Yeah. And if you didn't double jump at the right time, you wouldn't be able to double jump at all. Yeah. And it would just drop you. Yep. Ugh. So that was that was my biggest complaint with this last bit was this net part. Having to uh, Oh yeah, there we go. Failed. Having to do that a couple times was uh was not so much fun. Uh, but I like these these spinning blades at the end, and the the whole like meat circus look was just kind of an interesting combination of our two our two minds. All of it. Did anybody else on that ladder jump on it the other way and actually climb that whole thing, rather than the sliding like you did? Oh no, yeah, I, I slid. Down. No, but I I did wind up trying to climb back up it because I uh-huh. thought when it like turned the camera, I had to go the other way and wound up dying uh-huh. that way. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, like, I didn't think you could get on it like that. And I had jumped and floated to it and cli- and grabbed it, and I had to climb that whole ladder. I liked the, the additional element here of having to throw the juggling torches back, but the health that you got back from the juggling torches made this fight way yeah. too easy. Yeah, essentially, you had to wait until his head was down low to throw those spikes at him. Yep. But the um, entire time, you're just like, oh, okay. I'm just going to pick up health and jog yeah, around. Yeah, there was yeah. so much health that you didn't really have to worry about it. 
And oh, the yeah. levitation makes you so much faster and makes you not go. See the projection he pops out of it right yeah. there. There's good old Pop. Happy to see him. Turns out he was a psychic all along, just like we thought. He wasn't a bad guy. Not a bad guy at all. Just a bad parent. <laughs> Fight the butcher. Yeah, so this is the part where I realize, like, oh, I can, I can just use my shield and uh, never really have to do anything here mechanic-wise. Like, yeah, I like watching your stream, and you're like, where'd my super, mo my super mode? Uh, super yeah, because at first I didn't realize that there was a time charge on it in the top right there. Um, I just thought I was gonna spend the whole fight like that. <laughs> so I was, I was really <laughs> thrown off. I thought maybe like I used an ability when I wasn't supposed to, and it got rid of it. And I was like, oh, how do I get it back? Um, but yeah, again, there were a ton of health points here from the, the juggling torches, which kind of was a little disappointing, kind of trivialized the last fight, which was a little, a little sad. Um, but it was, it was an appropriately epic ending to, uh, to the game. So I thought, I thought it was a lot of fun to, to resolve Coach Oleander's mental issues, which again, apparently makes him perfectly acceptable for, uh, teaching <laughs> kids. Like they just put him right back up. They're like, yeah, okay. Seems right. You're, you know, you're fine. But he he had multiple cat scans. Yeah. Proof. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um. So it's cool to to get our psycho not badge and be an official psycho not for one day's worth of camp. Uh, and we must. Turtleneck. Yeah. Yeah. The tactical turtleneck. You got that sweet like side swoop on the hair. I, I am a little disappointed he lost the goggles. I hope that if in Psychonauts two you come back as a full psycho not, we get to keep the goggles. Yeah, you, you keep your full normal suit if you look at any of the uh, stuff they have. So you, you don't goggle without goggles. That's true. Yeah. You couldn't be goggle without the goggles. Um, so I think that's uh, that. You know, it was an appropriate ending to the game. I love the credits, seeing all the all the recaps of the levels and the cute the cute bunny rabbits. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's let's talk a little bit about the the specific scores and kind of let everybody say their piece as to, to what they thought about the game. So Carson, with 10.5 out of 15 bacon strips, uh, <laughs> which I think is roughly like a 7 out of 10. Yeah. So uh, overall, I enjoyed it. That's why I gave it a fairly decent score. Uh, comedy based on it was something that initially draws you in. And just like the camp is, is fun to explore and see all the different people. Uh, I would have enjoyed seeing more of it. Uh, the completionism part of me likes it as well because there are so many things to collect. Uh, the different levels were all so well designed and different enough that they kept your intrigue and everything. The only the issues I had with it were that would kept it from getting a 15 out of 15 bacon strips was <laughs> the fact that there wasn't too much of a hint system. There there was with the bacon, hence the bacon strips. Uh, where it would tell you small little things. Some of the some of the levels where you had to collect a certain item got kind of frustrating. And then uh, going along with the frustration, the platforming sometimes, if the camera wasn't the right spot, you'd fall right off or you wouldn't latch on, kind of like we saw in the last part. And then the the controls were kind of kind of wonky for me. But I liked the different powers and everything like that. The combat was a good little reprieve from the platforming, but. Overall, probably the camera and controls kept it from being a 15 out of 15 for me. Your counterpoint with 8.5 out of 10 lungfish citizens, Gravy Train, what did you think um, about it? Same same I mean, cons? I, similar. Um, I don't think the controls were necessarily that bad. I just think that the some of the levels and the way that it was designed made it very difficult to use them properly, like jumping on and latching on to certain objects properly. Um, the camera system is definitely something that frustrated me a lot. Um, just like the, the ones that force camera change when you jump to a certain platform where it does it too soon and you're still moving, or um, there are certain areas where it's hard to get your camera positioned in a certain way. There is one thing with the camera I don't think anybody else might have used very often, but you can actually press down on the right thumbstick and go into first person and look around. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot easier to, if you're trying to see something specific and you can't get the camera position somewhere, you can do that. Um, the fact that I feel like the game was rushed and there are like certain story parts that seem to have been missed or just, you know, feel like they, they had to leave it out, like they didn't have time to do it. It just, it wasn't 
as complete as it probably should have been. But I mean, I'm still I was kind of shocked that this game did do better, like overall, uh, with other people. Um, so. Yeah, it's got a lot. It's got a lot going for it. Um, yeah, and my favorite part is usually story when it comes to games. So like story and acting and stuff, and this game was awesome with that. Mm -hmm. I love it. Goose, twenty five out of thirty Psychonaut badges. What were I, your thoughts think, on the game? I think guys have been giving this a little too much. Uh, I mean, you'd be taking a little hard. Remember, this game came out in two thousand five. This is the same year as like Resident Evil Four came out that year. Uh, what else was there? I want to say, like, Fear came out, God of War, that was the first God of War, Kingdom Hearts 2, so, like, there were some other platformer-type games that came out, and those games had atrocious, atrocious cameras at parts and times. Like, the first God of War is pretty much unplayable at this point if you try to watch it, because you're just like, I, I can't look at where I'm trying to fight. It's miserable. So, like, this game, it has a pretty decent control setup. It's tight, your character moves when you expect it to move, a lot of the the platforming ele uh, platforming elements, I really had no issue with, just because it's just you know you see you, you want to go there, you just look, you see your shadow, you can land there, you're done. I think it's it's a very funny game. It reminds me a lot of honestly Shrek. It's just like there's kid humor, there's dumb stuff, and then there is just stuff that is clearly meant for a much more adult audience that's gonna go right over any kid playing it. But if their parents watching them or if their parent is playing it, they're gonna be like, this game is so inappropriate for my child and fantastic. Um, haven't beaten it yet. I plan to in the near future. So, kind of got a bit of a preview today, but I'm excited. It's fun. I like it a lot. I agree wholeheartedly. I give it. Uh, I gave it an eight out of ten. Four out of five. Uh, Pokey Lopes. Um, I I have a lot of the same pros and cons as you guys. I definitely want to stretch that. If you are looking for a funny game, this is this is the game to play. Like the comedy in this game is great. It's a it's a good mix of just kind of childish, inappropriate humor um, and, like, you know, good wordplay. And, and I got some really deep belly laughs out of this one I didn't expect to, uh, which was kind of my favorite part is you'd just be kind of cruising along and then they'd throw something in you you weren't expecting. So the comedy is is my favorite part of that about it. Uh, for the stream, it actually was pretty, it was pretty good because we were doing, you know, the Games Club just across the month and we had a bunch of other games that we were playing at the same time. So I liked that the game wasn't super long, but I do agree with you, Graves, that uh, it, it did seem a little short, especially near the end. Um, things kind of wrapped up a little quicker than I was expecting them to. So it, it felt like it was paced pretty well, but at the end it, it definitely felt a, a little bit rushed. Otherwise, I really enjoyed the platforming of it real tight. Um, I used to play a lot of platforming games as a kid, so this was kind of fun to take me back to those days, and I, I would happily play it again, trying to maybe do like a quick little speed run. Uh, or if I ever had the time, actually trying to go through and find all the different chit chats and maybe do a hundred percent run, I can I can hardly stomach the idea of that just because there's just so much to collect. All those figments, yeah. All those figments. Oh man. Some of them are just so hard to see that you don't don't even know where they are. Fiasco, take us home with five and a half out of seven arrowheads. That's like a it's <laughs> like a seventy nine percent. You had like a whole breakdown, like you've got. I, yeah, I have like yeah, I do. I have <laughs> so I um there were so many things that I liked and and, and things that that were part of what I liked but separate uh, it was so hard to come explain but so yeah, like a traditional review breakdown. I did like graphics, music, cinematics, etc. Like so graphics I did a 7, music 8, cinematics 9, story 10, content 9, control 6 and gameplay 6. And um how I came to that conclusion, like, like some of the things I liked was this is probably one of the most original games I've ever played. Um, the, the story, uh, the, the, the humor, everything. Like I laughed throughout the entire time that I was playing it. Um, it's just uh, I didn't get to finish it, and, but I do plan on finishing it because I'll, the things I liked, it's, it's going to take me a little bit longer than a month. I'll just have to be sitting at my computer staring at it and saying, hmm, you know what? Let me open the Psychonauts back up. <laughs> um, the level design was very clever. Uh, how they, the diversity and how they uh, put the level with the character's personality. I mean, you, you get that right off the bat with the, um, the first level that you jump into. Um, redundancy, uh, I, I don't do good with redundancy. And this, this game, I haven't 
the only redundancy that I dealt with in this game was my own fault. Because I kept falling off that one ledge, or I couldn't figure out that boss, and I kept trying the same thing over and over again, just instead of realizing, maybe I should switch it up. Um, I think that kind of connects to what Carson was saying, too, in that yeah. it doesn't have a great hint system. You know, the, there is one, but it doesn't really pull punches when it comes to you figuring out that sort of stuff, just like a lot of those old games don't. Yeah, if you, if you don't get that, if those moons don't align, you're just going to be hitting your head against the... Um, I did it. The, the collectible, the item collectible choices, I really liked how it fit with the whole grand scheme of things, like the figments of your imagination and uh, the emotional baggage. The emotional baggage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it. Like there was one. T uh, whenever I finally realized, I think um, I was spaced out. Whenever they explained the emotional baggage thing, but I was like, "What the hell is crying? Why do I hear this <laughs> weeping sound? What the fuck is going on?" And then I come across this bag. And so I was like, this shit, I like it. This is good. <laughs> um, and, and, and how that, especially like the, the figments, how it matched the level. It wasn't like a generic, like a star for everything. It was, it was the design that matched that person's, that, that character's personality, that level you're in. So that was good. Uh, platforming, I don't have a history of platformers. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to force myself to get into them. Uh, and when I do play these platformer games, I actually enjoy it a lot. And that, like the 2D side-scroller platformers, I enjoy them. Uh, for the longest time, I, I was scrolling through stream and I see like a game that's like a, 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 a uh, digitized side-scroller. It looks like something I'd play in 1992 on Nintendo or 1980, whatever on Nintendo. Uh, overwhelmingly positive. Well, I'm, I'm finally going back and realizing why these games are so popular and so accepted. Um, really enjoy the personalities of all the characters, uh, how I can just roam around in this open world, even though it's a 2005 game, we've discussed that, but I can roam around into this open world and the dialogue between the characters. We discussed that, I think, at the beginning of our review, but um, how they're interacting with each other and how they're interacting with me, and I can just sit there and listen to them. I don't have to read stuff. That's a huge plus for me whenever I'm playing a game. When they talk to me, that, that makes it a lot better mm -hmm. than, than me reading it. Because um, I could be, like, it, it might not, if I read it incorrectly, it might not add to the game as, as, as the character is, like, portraying their personality to me. They're speaking to me. I was like, man, this is, I like this is good. And I'm kind of lazy, too. If I don't have to, read, <laughs> I don't want to. Um, I think when we start, when we all started playing this, Nate, you and I had a conversation about the uh, attention to detail in the world. Like, w when I think of a 2005 game, I don't think of a, a game that, if I'm looking at what my goal is, I'm not thinking of a game that has all kinds of environmental like movements around me that like stuff that I shouldn't be paying attention to, but it's still there. And it, and it like adds to the life of the game. And this game, for an older game, I was kind of impressed at how that happens. Um, it's, it's hard for me to like single down one little detail, but there was a lot of stuff that was going on around my character and around what I was interacting with. It just kind of added to the life. I agree. Uh, I think it's really kind of withstood the test of time for being a, a game from 2005. I mean, yeah, if, you, I, if you upgrade the graphics and just upgrade the graphics, sell it for 20 bucks on Steam and you have like the best selling game on Steam easily. I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, maybe if they upgraded the controls and the camera a little bit too. Mm -hmm. they, the, and, the camera can be kind of upgraded upgraded that one. Yeah. I think the controls were were okay. I don't know. I didn't have any issues like with the controls themselves. I I, I did. I will get in that in a second. But I, there was a little bit of the controls that, and I'll explain. It. I'll give my analogy to it in, in just a second. Um, but I I struggled a little bit with the controls. Uh, for me, and the I problem was picking the, the spells. I always had problems when I was trying to select my spells, and I'd try and like press A to exit or B, and like I'd end up reassigning a spell, and I had to <laughs> yeah, go back through yeah. and try and remap and figure out which trigger everything was going on. We're used to fifty something keys, and you give me a controller that has six keys that I have to press. Somehow I messed it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I the music was great for me. I don't know if y'all paid attention to the music, but I had this nightmare before Christmas type vibe. Like, yeah, in, very in much. Carnival. So going back to Raz's history and where he comes from, like the whole carnival thing, 
the music had it, it 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 matched the 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 brain's personality but added like a carnival type theme to it and uh i i loved it it it, it added so much to me so the the last pit of my likes though was my favorite characters i really enjoyed lily and raz's interactions um i didn't get to see the end item uh i did a little bit by watching the stream that we're involved in but it was cool to see them at the end like, like that but uh I, it was really cute to see Lily like having a, like a really young kid that has a crush on this guy that, but she can't filter her mouth and she's acting faster than she can think. I, I like that, and then Nils with the whole digging the chicks thing and Dogen and yeah, it, it was it was fun watching those two characters. Yeah, the spying uh, through the hole at the girls. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's and then full of ladies. <laughs> like, hell yeah, man! Did you get to the point where he has a squirrel and he's using clairvoyance? No, I did not get to that point. Yeah, it's like the hole doesn't give him very good look. So he's <laughs> using the squirrel and using color variance inside. It's funny. I, I got to the point where he was setting that up, but I didn't get to the point where he was actually doing it. <laughs> um, things, things that didn't allow me to finish this, or things that are it's slowing my time in finishing it. It was the boss fights turned me off. Um, it's because of the movement and i don't know if that was limitations in um just older game tech because i like for instance movement like older games i suck at mario brothers now i die so many times because it's not where games have gotten crisper and like the movement so much more fluid and mm -hmm. the separation and pixels is so much more minute mario i'm like that motherfucker didn't even touch me do, 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 do. I'm <laughs> but uh so in this game i had i struggled on the boss fights because where i thought i was safe i was still getting hit by something and like the the things were hit, the slow the movement hit boxes yeah, the hit boxes and the slow movement i was like man this is just i'm struggling um so as much as i love playing the levels damn it that boss just ruined it for me uh, and that could have been like the PC port too. I don't know how it was on Xbox. I don't know. Uh, did all of us play this on PC? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've I've played it on Xbox before. Yeah, it, it might have been a PC port, but I struggled with it uh, with the boss fights. Um, the camera, we all mentioned that one. I'm not going to beat that dead horse. Uh, too many collectibles. I initially, when I heard the the, the side cards, the side core. I was like, holy shit, I already got spear, but um, I got these cards I'm collecting all over the place. I got these freaking arrowheads, and then I got to do how many of these to get a to level up ability. And it was, that was kind of overwhelming for me. And at first I was trying to attack all of that, but yeah, I had to come to a realization. It's not going to happen if I want to. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get the hundred percent. Yeah. Cause there's, there's <laughs> yeah. a lot out there. I, I had that same thing about uh, about two sessions in. I started playing, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I just won't collect every figure. Yeah. I'll get the ones that are there, but I'm not going to go out of my way for them. The, the last level I played, the, the figments, I didn't even see them. It was pretty much like, okay, I got to jump on that ledge. <laughs> kind of glimpse like, oh, that one's really bright and in my face. I forgot about those. Um, but uh, overall, it's a really good game. Uh, really good original story great characters uh, and I, I do plan on finishing it eventually it just it, it didn't it didn't drag me back into it like i can't wait to finish this yeah and so makes me very excited I'm, for the second one yeah I, i'm definitely going to finish it before the second one because that's one of my other ocd issues is is i have to finish the previous game before i can play the second one there's actually a vr version or a vr game right after this one yeah do i have I don't. No, I didn't. I didn't get it because if it was free, I would have already. Yeah, no, yeah. I <laughs> but but it. that was one of the things is I don't know anything, and and it was it was free on 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 Twitch here, which is which is awesome. And I think I remember telling myself like I'm gonna play the game before I buy the VR version. Yeah, I thought that the fact that it came on Twitch for free this this month that we started was like it was perfect. I'm really glad that mm -hmm. people were able to participate just because of that. So. Yep. Uh, the next games that we've actually been looking at, because I had a ton of fun with this, and I think that we should we should maybe 
keep the keep the train a rolling for anyone that's interested in joining. Um, we were looking at three options that we've going we're going to put to a vote. Eight bit hordes is like a uh, like a pixel dragon and knight style RTS game that we found on Steam. If you look in the uh, the description for the channel directly below the stream, you can find a link there to that. Eco is one that is still in early development, but looks pretty well flushed out. The one problem I've heard is that it can be kind of slow, but I, I'm renowned for liking grindy games, so that was an interesting kind of like uh, simulation. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to describe that one, but it, it looks like it's, it's a pretty interesting one as well. And then I have played some Terraria in the past, but I understand that there's a lot more depth to that game than I'd ever known before, and that honestly sounds like a lot of fun to me. I, would, I wouldn't I would mind sinking my, sinking my teeth back into Terraria for another month and, uh, and then doing kind of a critical analysis of the game. Um, so, if uh, anybody's out there other than us, enter your vote into the chat. Guys, we should also vote. Um, but I... I you know, I think I think I am gonna vote for Terraria. You should be able to just uh, put a number in the chat, and it should grab it there. Let me uh, let me confirm that it's working. Are all of these okay. multiplayer? Or are these all single? Player? These are remember. all these are all single player. Um, here, let me let me try and reactivate this vote because it looks like it's... Uh, Sorry, has no, opposite, opposite. They are all multiplayer okay. enabled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let me see. It looks like it's opened up again. So, let me... okay. Yeah, it's working now. So enter in your number. That'll let you vote. Um, it looks like we had oh, one. Re-enter. Do we need to re-enter ours? Yes. Re-enter. Sorry about that. There they are. Eight bit hordes. Terraria. Eight bit hordes coming up on the front. Hey, honk. Thanks for coming in, man. Oh. Okay. That's Bruce. Oh, is that Goose? Okay. Hi, my name is Goose Bacon. <laughs> hey, I've been here the whole time, but okay. All right, it looks like a tight race, but 8-Bit Hordes looks like it might be the one that we're going to get to play this uh, this next month. Cool. Yeah, well, thank you RTS. guys for... Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, really appreciate you guys taking the time to join me in playing the game and then discussing it. We'll, we'll work a little bit on the format for the next one. There are a couple of rough patches, and we'll, we'll see if maybe we can't shrink it down to about an hour and a half, but... Uh, this was uh this was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming in. Does this mean does this mean Jacob's gonna join us for uh the second games club? I, I hope see so. He's he, he's excited about RTS. Yes. Good. I I got him to download uh, Psychonauts last weekend and he never played it. So. So I, you know what? I'm not gonna. I mean, I I I, I bought Eight Bit Hordes like four days ago and I haven't <laughs> opened it up because I was like I don't want to get a head start. So. Yeah, I'm looking it's forward to it. It's on sale right now, by the way. By the is way, it? it's on sale uh, this yeah. week and seven bucks, six seventy four. Yeah. Oh, nice. Not a not it a bad deal at all. There is the link for anybody that didn't grab it from below, uh, and we'll uh, we'll schedule an event and and let you guys know. Did you get Ape It Hordes or Ape It Hordes Complete Edition? Well, I think the only the... difference is the soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack comes with the complete edition. So oh, yeah, well, I got Ape It Hordes. <laughs> My soundtracks, like everything, is on. Uh, uh, my fucking uh, Spotify. So I don't think my soundtrack is going to be used much. <laughs> Fair enough. To buy it. All right. Well, we're going to turn it off for now. But thank you guys for tuning in. And again, thanks you guys for participating in the uh, the games club. Thanks. Wrong.